Hello, and welcome back to Educator.com's Introduction to PHP course. Uh, today's lesson is a very exciting lesson because we're going to start working on our mock store web application that we had talked about in the introductory lesson. And in order to do that, we're also going to learn about the topic of include statements. So <clears throat> in today's lesson, we're going to talk about, uh, as mentioned, include statements, something known as the include path. We're going to talk about the importance of, of code reuse, which is an extremely important topic. Uh, something known as require statements. And then, as uh, often we do, we're going to talk about coding conventions as it relates to include and require statements. And then, um, finally, the exciting part is we're going to uh, get into our introduction to our web application. So what is an include statement? Well, essentially, an include statement is a uh, statement in your PHP code that allows you to include the contents of one PHP file within another. And the included file is often referred to as the included file. Uh, now the included file is um, treated as PHP code and it gets executed accordingly. And any variables that you define in your PHP code and your main PHP script prior to an include statement are available in the include file. And uh, any variables that you define in the included file are also available in the rest of the main PHP script. And we'll see a, see a little more of that in a second. Um, one thing to note is that when PHP reaches an include statement, which looks like these two down here, these two statements, um, it goes and goes and fetches that file and it starts processing it. And when it processes it, it enters in HTML mode, um, just like it does when it starts beginning to process a PHP file. Uh, it assumes that everything is, is not PHP code. Uh, so in order for you to include PHP code in an include file, uh, you have to properly delimit the code with the PHP opening and closing tags. Now in PHP, there are two syntaxes for uh, the include statement. The first one here is, uh, uses not, doesn't use, make use of parentheses, and the second one here um, makes use of parentheses. They both function the same exact way, and uh, in this course we're going to be using the one without the parentheses. So let's take a look at uh, what we might use an include file for. Um, we have a page here called includeexample.html, um, and it's a simple HTML page with uh, a content section. And what we can do is sort of subdivide this into a, a header section, a footer section, and a content section. And what we can do is take the beginning information or the header section of the web page and separate it out into a separate file. So uh, in this case, it's called header.html. So what we've done is we've taken the beginning of this file out and we're going to place it in a separate file here. Then what we're also going to do is take out the, the footer section or the end section of the web page and we're going to include it in a file called footer.html. Now what that's going to allow us to do is if we rename includeExample.html to includeExample.php and make use of include statements, we can get the same web page. So what we've done here is we have a PHP file and it starts off with in the line includeHeader.html. And what that's going to do is when it reaches this line of code, it's going to go out, find header.html and include that um, and process this content uh, just as if it were already in this file to begin with. Then it's going to, um, after it finishes the inclusion, it's going to go ahead and continue processing. This is just straight HTML, which it passes out, uh, passes on to output. And then it's going to reach another uh, PHP tag um, section with another include file. And what that's going to do is go and include the footer.html file, which simply contains HTML. So um, PHP is going to process this set, process this file, and since it's just HTML, it's simply going to out output it. So by the time we get to the end of the file, we have uh, the same file as here before, except it's sort of spread out in different parts uh, over three different files. And um, what that allows us to do, as you'll see, is it allows us to sort of create a, a template in that we can uh, simply have, have a page, for each page we have it look like this, with this sort of template, and it, every page can have the same header and the same footer, and all that differentiates uh, that differ, is different from one page to the next is the actual content. 
Um, so what that means is that we can go ahead and change something in, let's say, the header file. For example, maybe we have a logo at the top of the page. We can change that in just the one include file, and it's going to update all of the pages. So if we actually go and take a look at, uh, this is lecture eight, and if we go and take a look at includeexample.html, this is uh, what the file looks like. It's got a simple content goes here, um, header. And if we blow this up, this is what the source code looks like. Um, now if we go back and we look at includeexample.php, which is the one with the include statements, what we should find is that it prints out the same HTML. And if we actually go and look at the source code, um, the source is actually the same as well. So here you can see, uh, the only difference being that uh, in this one I've changed the title to uh, .php because it's a different file name. Um, but basically what's happened is in this file, PHP has uh, inserted the contents of header.html at the beginning. Um, it, in, it inserted the content that was in the main file, which was include test.php, and, and then it output the uh, footer information, and the, the, the information was contained in footer.html. So as you see, it has a desired effect of creating the same